Welcome, geology students. Mr. Hey, Wad. guys. Mr. Baldwin. Uh, Mr. Zafiropoulos or Mr. Z. All right, we're really glad you guys are joining us. And we just want to give you guys a little bit of information about what we think is some good advice for watching these videos and getting a lot out of them. So, guys, what do you think some good points are for them to know? Well, when you go through it, make sure you have your slide deck ready to go, like your places to take notes. Uh, if there's something you didn't get, pause it, take some notes, or rewind it. Absolutely. Uh, YouTube's really great for that. The uh, slide deck that you have inside your packet is actually incomplete, and we're going to fill in the blanks here in the videos. So make sure you're getting down not only what's written on the slide, but then also additional notes about what we talk about during the presentation. And then another good point is at the end of each one of these little videos, there's going to be a little quiz for you to take. So once you've taken the quiz, if there are some questions that you're not sure about, please go back into the videos, have another look, and make sure that you get all those answers because the reason the quizzes are there is so that you can hit all the learning targets and make sure that you're good on all of those. Okay? All right. All right. Cool. Let's do this. So let's do section one for them. Cool. Want to start us off, Mr. Z? Uh, sure. Well, let's take a look at the um, at the uh, learning targets. We're going to be talking about spheres and system. This is Earth spheres, and uh, one is that we're going to define the uh, six spheres uh, that are on Earth, and then we're going to identify the uh, in, the uh, interactions and relationships between Earth spheres. So just kind of <clears throat> general overview, we've got seven spheres that we're actually going to cover. Your book only goes into four, we do a little bit more. So we talk about the atmosphere, lithosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, cryosphere, anthrosphere, and exosphere. And I think these guys can probably figure out what a few of those yeah, are Yeah, some of them are pretty basic. Yeah. So let's look at some of the definitions. The atmosphere, I bet you guys already guessed, is a layer of gas that surrounds the Earth. It includes weather and climate and the biosphere bio for biology mm -hmm. okay includes all of the living things on earth want to grab the next ones and then we have the cryosphere which is frozen water frozen h2o which can include glaciers icebergs a lot of stuff you'd find at higher latitudes in north and the south pole and then we have the exosphere which is outer space Right? So very, I mean, we could talk about the moon there, other parts of the solar system, etc., that are out beyond Earth's atmosphere. Then we go into hydrosphere. You guys have all seen hydro before, so think water. So it's like any of the liquid water on Earth. So you've got rivers, lakes, oceans, groundwater, and we're actually going to study a bunch of those this year. Uh, then we've got the anthrosphere, which is the people, so kind of the, our impact on the Earth. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which is pretty good for us, is the lithosphere. That one's uh, all the solid earth, so rocks, fossils, minerals, anything like that. Okay. So thinking about some of the components of Earth's spheres, some things that you might see if you just go outside or take a look out the window or even look around, and what the interactions are between them, because really it's not just the things and what sphere they belong to, but it's how those things interact with each other that becomes important. So here's a list of we want you to list the spheres for these interactions. So which two spheres are being described here? So the first one is a raccoon that's breathing. Well, raccoon, that's something that's alive, that's not a person, so that'd be biosphere. Right, and what are they breathing? Atmosphere. Okay, so an interaction between the biosphere and the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one's meteorite burning up in the atmosphere. I think we gave away part of that one. Um, but meteorite would be part of yeah. which sphere? And that's coming from the exosphere. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the interaction between those two spheres. Okay. Person taking a bubble bath. Mm -hmm. So we've got lots of things at play here because if you're taking a bubble bath, you're in water. So Hydro. that's the hydrosphere. And the bubbles have air in them, so that's the atmosphere. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And then the person is part of the biosphere. The biosphere and or the anthrosphere, mm -hmm. right? Remember, we're yeah. living, but we're part that's of right. people, so right. we're anthrosphere. So yeah. I think that's kind of a tricky one because it's yeah. actually four of the seven spheres. Yeah. There, so cool. Water evaporating from a lake. Water's got to be hydrosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it's evaporating into the in atmosphere. atmosphere. So we have a phase change from liquid to gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And then lava flowing into an ocean. Ooh, so lava, that'd be like rock? That yeah. would be like of? rock. Okay. okay, so that would be that lithosphere. That would be the mm -hmm. lithosphere. And if it flows into the ocean, ocean's water, hydrosphere. Good. Yeah. All right, and the last one is melt water from a glacier in Alaska that's flowing into a bay. 
So you've got the glacier. Which is frozen uh -huh. water, which we said was the cryosphere. Right. And it's melting, so we're going from a solid to a liquid to the hydrosphere. And then it's also fresh water flowing into that salty bay water. So it's hydrosphere and cryosphere. Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, mm -hmm. so good. Make sure, students, that you can do those because there are going to be a couple of those on your quiz. So you might want to come back to this slide, too. Okay, so when we talk about Earth as a system, we're looking into a lot of these spheres and their interactions. So first we want to define a system, and it's just a group of interacting interdependent parts that are really complex all together. Okay, so we just talked about a bunch of independent parts mm -hmm. as part of different spheres, and now we're going to look at the way they connect to each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thinking about matter and energy. So what do you see in this little picture? And students, you might actually want to pause the video here and start to think about what is that system that's shown in the picture and what are the interactions between the different spheres in it. Mm -hmm. okay. So we actually have two types of systems. We've got an open system and a closed system. Now if you look at the picture, open system, what's happening with matter and energy? What do you guys think? Well, we see matter coming in, and then we see matter going out in an mm -hmm. open system. And we also see energy going in, and then we see energy going out. And the example we're given here is a hurricane. All right, so if we think about a hurricane as a storm, right, that, uh, that originates in the Atlantic Ocean, right, where does it get its energy from? Uh, it's from, like, the warm water and the yeah, sun exactly. heating yeah. up the warm water. So energy is coming into the system, mm -hmm. and it's coming out when it's kind of letting go of a lot of that exactly. energy. Yeah. Exactly, when it rains. <clears throat> You're right. So there's a transformation within the system. It's not the same energy going in as coming out. It's mm -hmm. not the same matter going in as is going out. Something's happening while those things are interacting in the system. It's changing them, mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking about those changes in a second, but here we have to talk about the other kind of system, which is the closed system. So in a closed system, there's no matter transferred. It's mm -hmm. energy yeah. that comes in, does something in the system, and then some energy goes out, but there's no change in the matter. Yeah, okay. the matter stays the same. Matter stays in the system. So, so the example we give there is a, a cooling system in a car or a radiator, yeah. right? And that's kind of a closed system because the water just stays in that system. It circulates around the engine, Right? And the energy from the engine heats up that water, it goes into the radiator, and then as a part of the radiator, that water gets cooled down, and the energy goes in and comes out. But the water or the antifreeze that's in the radiator stays the same. So the energy changes the heat and cooling part, mm -hmm. but the radiator fluid's the same. That's the matter. Yep. Okay, cool. And we've got two different types of feedback mechanisms. And these are a little bit hard to understand sometimes if you look just at the negative and positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But let's talk about the bottom one first because I think that's probably the easiest one to talk about. Mm -hmm. So the positive feedback mechanism okay. is what we think about when we think about something driving change or, mm -hmm. or having change happen because of it. So if you heat up some ice mm -hmm. so much that it melts, mm -hmm. like glacial ice, mm -hmm. then that exposes more land surface. Mm -hmm. yeah which will heat up faster than the ice did because it's a darker color, mm -hmm. right? And it just becomes a system or a cycle yep. that continues to change temperature overall from a little bit cooler to a little bit warmer as it continues to go through the system. Mm -hmm. okay. And temperature continues to increase throughout the system, throughout this mechanism. So it's positive because the temperature is reacting in a positive manner as it changes, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's driving a change. There's a net change at the end of it, right? That increased. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. increased. Okay. Yeah. What about negative feedbacks? Yeah, negative's kind of, it's a little bit different because the, the system kind of stays as is. There isn't much change to it. So like one example is um, when we sweat, if we get really hot, we want our bodies to stay at the same temperature, mm -hmm. so we start to sweat to cool ourselves down mm -hmm. to kind of maintain that temperature. Exactly. And uh, goosebumps are exactly the same way. When your temperature goes down and you kind of get the chills, you increase the surface area on your skin by getting goosebumps to warm yourself up. And shivering acts the same way, just to maintain that 98.6 degree body temperature. Good. All right, so that's the end of this first video. And again, go into your class webpage, grab the quiz, 
take a shot at it. And if you need to go back to the videos, go back to the videos and check them out again. Yep. Good luck, guys. See you in class. Take care.